Hello, beautiful Cancerians. Welcome to your life path and abundance reading. This will be a combination of tarot scope and horoscope. So let's get started. We have a combination of tarot and horoscope for the month of February. Spirit is wanting us to look at how you can really act with a partner or in your life to be more fair or to receive more fairness. You have a soulmate that Spirit wants you to, to look at or Spirit wants us to look at in this reading. We also get blessed. You are duly blessed this month. So let's look and see. This is an exquisite reading. We get in the first house, this is your body, how you present yourself to the world. You're in a state of exhaustion. You know, you're really ready to take a break, a time out. You have, if you have a partner in your life, they're coming in with this beautiful magician energy. They're coming in to lighten the load for you. If you are not in partnership with anyone, it really means that people that are in your life giving you support, those could be business partners, they could be anybody who gives you significant advice that you count on. It could be lawyers, it could be financial advisors, it could be um doctors. So if any of you are having any health issues, you have a really good healer that you're working with. But when we look at this in the traditional sense, you have a partner who is going through a lot of change. Um, in your seventh house, if you are a Cancer Ascendant, you have Pluto. So many of you have perhaps had the loss of a partner, perhaps you've had a divorce. But what we see is that you're letting go of any burdens that you have been carrying in the recent past. The Ten of Air is an air sign energy and we see a lot of abundance here coming in for you. The Ten of Fire looks as though you've been working very hard, that you have been working, some of you on a creative project specifically, some of you may have had very heavy bills regarding children or their education, and we see that for you at this time, you have one, two, three, four, five planets of good fortune in the house that represents either a partner's money, an inheritance, money from bank loans and or um, it could be money that you have uh, banked. It could be uh, investments paying off. So Jupiter is about expansion. So first of all, for many of you with Jupiter, we may see that a parent, Saturn energy, has come in and bestowed you with the gift of money. It can be a gift. It can be a bank loan. It can be an inheritance. It can be a partner who is has hit, you know, has hit a period of time in their life when they may have gotten a contract that's very lucrative, something that will last a long time. If you've been trying to buy a house or start a business, the money appears to be here. The SBA, I know, is giving out a lot. They're being very generous at this time uh, in terms of all of that. But what we see is this is something you love. Your eighth house has not been lit up with this many Aquarius planets, which are all about your freedom, all about you being able to do something in a new progressive way. If you are in, in technology, will be life altering in terms of this. So it really shows that this is where your blessing is this month, is in your eighth house of other people's money, inheritances, a partner's money, or the gift of money or a loan. So it'll be different things for different people. But with Mercury there, we do have Mercury going retrograde. So whatever contracts you sign, you know, you just have to really look at them very carefully. 
The house that represents your local neighborhood, it looks as though you really are entrenched in your local neighborhood. This is all about communication. You know, you're also that person who's reliable. You're the person who would carpool. You're the person who would say, good morning, honey, how are you? You know, this is energy that's incredible because it is a lover's card. It is Virgo energy. You're very dutiful. You're very nurturing. You know, you have this beautiful energy that's Gemini energy and it rules the third house. So what we're seeing here for you is that you're, the way you love people, the way you communicate with the people you love absolutely heals the wounds of the people that you uh, love. You know, we get the third house, which is local neighborhood. We get the ninth house, which is a very, a much more um, philosophical view. So for you, love shouldn't be in question. You're of the philosophy that love should be shown, it shouldn't be hidden, and you should speak your love. For those of you who are involved with the Pisces, you know, what we're seeing here is that you may have a love interest or a partner who is not very expressive, not very emotive. And right now, there may even be things that you don't know about this partner. Neptune doesn't have to mean anything negative at all, but it can mean that you don't really understand a partner or the way they communicate. The ninth house also is ruled by Sagittarius energy, the world card. So for some of you, you could be selling a house, you might be thinking about selling a house, you know, it really shows that you might have ambivalent thoughts, but we see this beautiful energy of you giving up burdens, you know, we get, you know, transition onto another phase of life that's going to make you very happy and you're going to do whatever work you need to have to make sure it's a smooth transition. The fourth house of home the nine of fire, you feel, I think for many of you, you feel as though, you know, especially if your children are grown, especially if they've gone off to college or university, you will be looking at possibly lightening the load, you know, being uh, so that you don't have to work so hard in any given day. Because the nine of fire says that, of course, you would love your home. You'd be very devoted to it. You would work hard for it. But we get the ten of air, the ten of fire, the nine of fire, which is on the verge of the ten of fire. For some of you, you just feel like your home is too expensive, the taxes are too high, and you simply don't need it. The temptation is, is that for many of you, you uh, might be interested in taking on a partner at this time for a business proposition. And one thing that I would say is to make sure that you've gotten through the Mercury retrograde period. And the reason I say that is Libra rules the seventh house. There's a magician here. There's a Pluto here. So if you are negotiating a divorce degree, it does look as though you might be tempted to bail out and do something the easy way. Uh, I would advise, you know, that that temptation card would advise against it. Don't take the easy way out when it comes to career, your public standing, your credit history, you know, a partnership in which... Um, you know, may have elevated you into a higher status. You know, be careful about any decisions that have that sort of temptation to it. Like, I shouldn't do this, but I really want to do it. If you're thinking in those terms, you need to think again because you're duly blessed no matter what happens. Uh, so it's just important to stay true to your values at this time. When we look at the fifth house, this is your children, this is your creative projects, this can be romance and love, and what we see is we have Uranus here, which is a planet of sudden endings, sudden beginnings, but it's also freedom. Many of you want freedom. You don't want to be responsible for anyone else. And so for many of you, if you've left a marriage, there may be this feeling that 
although you are really naturally inclined to be married, because Taurus is a second house. Taurus rules Venus, but now you're really changing how you feel. Mars and Uranus could mean for some of you that you took a really, you ha are having a hard time, that everything that you used to think about romance may be changing radically. For some of you, it could be children going off to college, you have freedom, you're feeling sad because a five of cups feels a certain sadness. You're sad at the way things are changing, and yet you're beginning to really see with the Mars energy that it allows you a level of freedom that you haven't had before. The Four of Air is really speaking to us at this time that your associations, friendships, and everything are really going to go through some changes because you have Scorpio on the 11th house cusp. Right now, it looks as though most of you are not highly involved in community organizations or, you know, really, it's almost like taking a break from the 11th house, which is actually Aquarius energy. And it's about just being at home, being alone, getting rest, getting a lot of sleep, really not socializing so much, which is also pandemic oriented, right? When we look at your sixth house and your 12th house, you are changing. The fortune, the wheel of fortune card is in your day to day living. Gemini energy is air sign energy. It flows beautifully with partnerships, career. It flows beautifully with your eighth house of other people's money. So for many of you, you are really examining, you know, the energy of your career as it relates to your daily life and what, what you can expect in terms of the outcome, the investments, the long-term benefits of that. And especially if you're looking at getting married or a new partnership. The world card in the 12th house says, again, it's releasing, uh, closing out a very successful cycle in your life. You know, for many of you, you might have even traveled for your, your work life, and now you might get to stay home. This can also be working at home. So some of those day-to-day -day benefits that are coming to you are going to really allow you to have more freedom because Sagittarius is Jupiter. Jupiter is posited in your eighth house. So a lot of what's going on in the world right now is really benefiting you in a way that it's very powerful. When we look at the advice from the ancestors and the ancients, we see shed the old skin. So if you were born from the 11th to the 19th approximately of Capricorn, it's really saying that everything you think about partnership is changing, that you have been very challenged in the past. Again, this can mean for some of you the ending of a partnership or the loss of a partner. And it's really, um, it's really challenging you, but it's a time in your life when there truly is magic brewing. We have the advice from the spirit cats is flow, meet Zephyr. This is Zephyr. And she is flexible, flowing, and gentle like a light wind. She intuitively responds to the rhythms of the world around her. When a door opens, she just walks through easy as a breeze. When the door closes, she circles, eddies, and finds a window to slip through silently. She blooms with the spring and knows how to let go of the fall. She is change and she welcomes change. Her strength comes not only through the lack of resistance, but through perfect flow like a river sculpting the rocks, finding and making the space to keep moving. So if you would like to have a personal reading or you'd like to enter the contest for a free reading, I'm giving four a month for the month of February. You need to be subscribed and you hit, need to hit the notifications bell so you find out if you're a winner. Um, and if you don't want to enter by subscribing, hitting the thumbs up, you do need to leave a comment and or you can simply send an email. The description box has all the information for my personal website for booking readings as well as contest rules. Sending you light and love from Chicago. Send some back and tell me where you're from, Cancer. Bye-bye.